hey there gorgeous people welcome and welcome back to my channel i hope you guys are well and i hope you guys are staying safe in today's video i'm going to be showing you guys how to make the waistcoat that i'm wearing and if that sounds like something you're interested in you definitely want to keep watching okay but before we get into the details for the waistcoat if this is your first time seeing my face or if you're new here welcome welcome my name is ayotala creative director of so unique by the and the content creator of this channel diy with so unique by the and this channel was created just for you specifically for you to teach you loads of sewing crafts that you can do from the comfort of your home so if that sounds like your cup of tea hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss out on the awesome content that i have for you it promises to be fun detailed tutorials all the time okay and to all my ogs welcome back you guys know how much i appreciate you thank you for your love and thank you for your support you guys mean the world to me thank you so much right so guys like i said we're going to be learning about how to make this waistcoat i'm going to try take you through the end-to-end -end process so we're going to learn from converting our basic block into the pattern for the waist goods and then we're going to go ahead and move on to cutting the fabric out and then i'm going to teach you how guys how to sew it together piece everything together and then we're going to finish the beautiful waist coat. and one thing you'll see is that with mine it's nicely finished i went ahead to you know use a little bit of the fabric on the center front inside and then i went ahead to finish it really nicely and neatly everything is concealed in my opinion i did a great job so let me know what you guys think in the comments below all right guys without further ado we're going to get straight into the video enjoy bye go ahead and grab your supplies including the fabric scissors paper scissors your masking tape you need some pattern paper you need your marker or pencil you need your pattern both front and back you'd also need your measuring tape of course you need your thread you need your pins you need your magnet or pin cushion you need some buttons if you're going to use buttons for your waistcoat and of course you need your tailor stock or fabric marker you need some dress lining as well as some fabric to make your waistcoat pattern you need your basic bodice and basic skirt you want to join them together so that you have a basic blouse if you don't have if you don't know how to do this go ahead and watch the video i've linked in the icons above next you want to go ahead and connect the darts for the shoulder dart on the back to the waist start right and that's what we've done now by elongating the dart next thing we want to do is close the dart and by now you've watched my slash and spread method or technique video if you haven't watch it in the link card above and what we're doing is basically transferring this dart from the shoulder to like a princess dart using the arm o, right so along the arm o, locate where you want your princess dart to be and then draw a curve as shown this helps us with a slash and spread method so we're gonna head to close one dart at the moment you'll notice the paper is folding around the dart point but the moment i cut cut through the princess line around the arm o, it will give but before we cut through let's go ahead and mark how long we want the waistcoat to be for this i decided to go with the upper hip line that is already on the skirt part Pattern. so I just went ahead to cut through that horizontal line that we have next thing you want to do is you want to lower the neckline just by one centimeter and also you want to reduce the shoulder length as well now from the shoulder neck point you want to reduce it only by one centimeter and then go ahead and redraw your new neckline so basically just reduce the neckline by one centimeter all around now on the other side of the neckline we want to basically just mark how long we want the neckline to the shoulder length to be and i've gone ahead to mark that it's also important to mention that at this point you want to reduce like the arm o um the side same length right so i just went down by one inch and then i redrew i was redrawing my new arm o line right so this is the new arm o line go ahead and cut it off as shown the next thing we're going to do is we're going to reshape the um, shoulders just so that it's nice and smooth so i'm just basically redrawing this line and after doing that you want to go ahead and cut off any excess like if any it's just really tiny and then you cut out the neckline as shown and then we're going to go ahead and divide this pattern into two basically what we're doing is cutting out the dart so you have your center back piece as well as the side back piece and that's it guys we are done for the back pattern right so we're going to move on to the front now for the front pattern we've determined that we want it to be the same length as well obviously but the first thing we need to do is make room for the button wrap to make room for the button wrap, I decided to add 
the paper and I've marked two and a half centimeters, which is one inch on that part. Go ahead and draw the line like I've done now. And now we have our button wrap. Next, at the shoulder neck point, you want to mark one centimeter just so that it matches with the back piece. However, for this, the neckline is not round. It's going to be a slant line. So go ahead and draw your neckline depending on how wide, um, how deep or how low you want it to be so for this i'm using a short ruler which was being lazy however i could have used a longer ruler but like i said go ahead and draw the neckline the way you want if you wanted it higher you could go ahead and do a higher one however for this i was going with the lower neckline eventually again we're going to be using our slash and spread method to draw out a princess neckline so we'll be closing the shoulder dart which is currently open and then we'll be drawing out our shoulder um, we'll be um, cut, opening up the um, princess neckline and um, princess dart, right? So that we have um, the princess ammo. However, before we do that, we're going to quickly close the shoulder dart so that we can actually decide how wide we want the shoulder to be. And remember, the shoulder must match what we have on the back piece. So go ahead and draw your shoulder while it's closed and then reduce the side seam as well and then redraw your new arm O. So again, this part is absolutely optional. I want my waistcoat to be one of those ones where you have to wear something under. Like that's why I've kind of done all of this. But if you want to keep yours just as the top, then you can go ahead and keep that. So as you can see, immediately I opened or slashed my princess seam the other one decided to be at ease right so closing it was much easier there was less crease on my fabric so after doing that i'm going to go ahead and finish up the bottom now if you notice one thing waistcoats have is that they have a little bit of a um pointed area around the end in front so what i decided to do is go five centimeters from the end line and then I just mark that point. And the point where I'm marking at five centimeters is basically the points between the midpoints between the center front and the middle dart leg, right? So the middle of your dart, I just mark five centimeters there. And then when I mark five centimeters there, I go ahead and draw a bit of a like a wedge shape or a triangle to lead back to the actual hip line. So I know it's a bit complicated there, but I encourage you guys to watch it again. So I had my upper hip line, which is where you have a paper tape. And then I did five centimeters below that at the point, And then I went ahead to connect it back together. Now that that's done, we want to go ahead and cut out the pieces as shown. And then we're going to cut through our dart. To cut through the dart, you have to elongate that middle dart leg yes and then we can then cut through so that we have two pieces again we'll have the center front piece and the side front piece at this point you are done with your pattern pieces and you should have four pieces two for the front two for the back starting with the two front pieces pin them in place on your fabric and then go ahead and cut make sure you use a sewing allowance of half an inch all through i know in this video i used one inch at the bottom but please ignore me because i later went ahead to reduce it now for the center back piece you want to make sure you cut this unfold just like i'm doing so on the folded edge and then mark out your sewing allowances again use half an inch at the hem so that you don't run into problems later like i did cut out your pieces after doing this after cutting out the main fabric pieces, you want to go ahead and cut out your lining pieces. Pin the pattern onto the fabric and then go ahead and cut it out with half an inch all through. If you're cutting it out like an overlay like I've done, you don't need to add any allowance onto your lining. And again, make sure that your lining and your main fabric are the same length. So ignore this where it's longer. Now, one thing I want to call out is for the center front piece, I use the main fabric as my lining as well. So don't go ahead and cut out lining if you want a neat finish moving on to the back piece after cutting the back piece on fold you want to separate it so you have only the pattern paper and the reason why i'm doing this is to give a professional finish next you want to go ahead and draw a curve anywhere it doesn't really matter but preferably high up and then after drawing the curve you want to separate the pattern pieces now the upper curve you want to go ahead and 
you know cut that bag unfold and you want to use the main fabric for that because it just gives a professional feel add half an inch all through and cut it off now for the lower part of the center back you want to go ahead and pin this on your lining fabric add your sewing allowance of half an inch all through and cut it off at this point this is what it looks like notch the center of both points and then go ahead and pin it in place so the right sides are facing each other so you want to pin from the notch and work your way through the curves to the edges now when you're dealing with curves it's a bit hard but don't worry just be patient and take your time and pin it in place like I'm doing now once you're done pinning go ahead and sew it in place and this is what it looks like after sewing and top stitching as you can see it already gives a bit of a professional finish in my opinion lay out the pieces as you should be so center front in the middle and then lay out the side fronts pin in place and then go ahead and sew it in place now before we finish or get to the sewing machine you also want to take out two strips of fabric and for these strips of fabric you want to go ahead and sew them in place adding this little small strip is absolutely optional i just wanted to add it in but make sure you leave space to turn it inside out should you decide to add it in then you want to go ahead and make take the main fabric lay it on the table as it should center back first and then the sides on each either side then you want to go ahead and pin it in place but before pinning you want to go ahead and add that strip that we've just sewn and what the strip does is just basically just to give it a little bit of fit and adjustment if you need it so i made it too long you can just cut off any excess and then we're going to pin it where I've actually notched it and if you didn't know that notch is actually where your waistline is so I actually just notched it on the fabric and then I went ahead to pin this in place so that the open end is inside the seam so go ahead and sew it in place like we did for the lining and this is the result you can adjust this if you want depending on how you want it to fit moving on lay the lining on the main fabric and you want to go ahead and fix the neckline as well as sew the hem now like i said initially initially the hem of the main fabric was longer but i went ahead to reduce it later so this is what it looks like when it was longer but like i said i fixed this later and cut it off at this point this is the neckline and the hem done Moving on to the front pieces, go ahead and lay your pieces on the table as they should be, right sides facing up. Then go ahead and start with one center front and one side front. Pin it in place like I've done and go ahead and sew it in place with your sewing machine. I'm using my Genomi HD9 professional sewing machine here and I'm making sure to, you know, use my pins and guide myself while sewing as well. After sewing the main fabric, you want to repeat this for the lining as well. So this is what the lining pieces look like. And one thing I forgot to call out is on the lining, you want to leave about a gap of two inches on sewn. So that's the gap that I showed you guys. All right, guys. So if you were looking to add weld pockets to your waistcoat, it's at this point that you add in your weld pocket. And to do that, you want to locate your waist point or where you want the pocket to be. I went about two inches below the waist point and I went ahead to mark the pocket and do it. However, I didn't film that in this tutorial because I didn't want it to be too long. If you want a separate video teaching you how to add your weld pocket, let me know and I'll be happy to do it. However, this is what it looks like after adding the weld pocket. After adding the weld pocket that you want to add, go ahead and place the lining piece on the main fabric. Then you want to go ahead and pin the ends, making sure you follow the shape at the edge, right? That corner, follow it. And then go ahead and sew it in place. After sewing, you want to go ahead and give it a good notch just because we have a sharp edge there. And you can cut off any excess fabric after. Then you want to go ahead and do the center front sides so that it's closed. And after that, this is what it looks like. As you can see, I have my sharp corners at the edge and I also have the edge done at this point we're nearly done go ahead and lay the back piece on top of the front piece and we're going to make sure to do the shoulders so that the shoulders align starting from the shoulder neck point that's where the sh uh, main fabric meets the lining at the shoulder you want to go ahead and pin so that the seams align and then you want to go ahead and sew it on half an inch after sewing that, repeat it for the second shoulder and this is what it looks like. Now I've gone ahead to do one arm all, we're going to do the second arm all together. To close out the second arm all, go ahead and fold it over so that the right sides are facing each other and you are pinning on the wrong side. Then make sure not to tangle it and then go ahead and pin from the middle all the way to the ends of the arm all. So you repeat this for one side, making sure you are pinning the lining 
to the corresponding right side and then after working your way to the edge of the armhole we're going to repeat it for the other side as well this is what it looks like after go ahead and sew it on half an inch and after that you're going to have the task of turning the armhole to the right side so go ahead and turn it over to the right side like i'm doing now give it a good iron and top stitch if you can actually next you want to go ahead and sew the side seam now remember you should have a gap that is left unsewn so you don't want to sew where you have the gap that is left unsewn to sew the side seam you want to go ahead and grab the end of the armhole for both front and back pieces now that's where the armhole and side seam meet and then you want to go ahead and pin it in place you want to make sure you are doing this not on the side that has the gap or the hole to turn it inside out but on the other side first and then you want to go ahead and pin it in place so that you're pinning the right sides together on the main fabric it might get a bit difficult so you want to go in from the other side like i've done and then bring it out just like i've done right and then you should have like a whole full circle like this pin it in place so that you're pinning it all around right making sure you're pinning the main fabric to the main fabric and the lining to the lining all your seams should align and then after pinning it go ahead and sew it in place on one inch sewing allowance which is what i left for the side seam after sewing it in place give it a good iron and that's what it looks like now for us to do the other side again the other side is where you have the gap that is unsewn so you want to go ahead and find that gap that is unsewn which is here and then you want to go ahead and start pinning the armhole in place so again in similar fashion find the armhole end and then go ahead and pin the main fabric to the main fabric as far as you can because of how it's positioned it's going to be a bit tricky but don't worry just pin it in place and then when you pin it in place to an extent you're going to go in through that little gap that we left <laughs> i know it's very tiny but you can do this i believe in you so you go in through that little gap that we left and then you're going to pin the rest of it so at this point it became uncomfortable so through that little gap i went ahead to pull it out and then i pinned it in place right continue pinning and then i went ahead to sew it on the one inch sewing allowance that i left at the side seam after sewing on the one inch sewing allowance i went ahead to give it a good iron and this is what it looks like now now the last thing for us to do is to top stitch this gap close so i went ahead to top stitch this gap and then this is what it looks like after closing it at this point this waistcoat is practically done in my opinion it looks really nice i think i made the iron too hot so you can see the iron marks but last thing to do is to do the button holes and then go ahead and wear your waist waistcoat all right guys thank you so much for staying to the very end i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and i hope it was worth your while this is the finished product let me know what you think i would also insert a couple of clips of me wearing it but i think i did a good job like i said earlier but let me know in the comment section below and i'll see you next week bye